Good morning, everyone. Today I've got a special one for you. So we gotta replace the grips, the heaters, as well as I got a secret for you to keep your hands warm while riding. You can really tell how worn these OD grips really are, just from this close-up shot here. It definitely held up really well all winter long until right at the end of the season in spring, I decided to roll it into a creek and tore the left side here a little bit. I've also got a bonus tip for you to help keep your grips from moving all winter long. You'll also need access to air, which I'll show you why later. So the reason I'll be replacing the heaters on my handlebars here is because last year when I installed the Cheetah Factory Racing bars, we also installed a aftermarket heater on here, but unfortunately they didn't work very well. My hands were mostly cold all season long, so I got a set of stock ones to go back on to these ones. All right, first things first, we need to get these old grips off. I'm gonna try and do my best to keep the heaters intact since they do work, but it's always nice to have an extra set just in case. So as you can see, I'm not cutting very deep on it, just enough to cut the grip, not the heater below. So it's not leaving a mark or anything, or it's not cutting up the heater. It's just opening it up. All right, now we've got the old one removed. We got the surface prepped. Now we just need to find where the connector is for this and get the new one connected up. Don't mind all the missing pieces on the sled. We'll get that ready before the season. So next up, you're gonna wanna take this cover off right here. Underneath there, you are going to find these two connectors right here are your left and right heaters. We'll need to remove these two zip ties right there, as well as right there. And then we should be able to slip these two wires right out the top. So depending on which heaters you actually go with, the ones that I had on the sled before came with a connector that just connected right to the stock uh, harness. So the reason I chose the extended version like this for obvious reasons is that it just offers a lot more surface area for when you are riding you don't have to have your hand in one spot on the bar to keep it warm you can kind of have it anywhere on the grip and it'll keep your hand warm. The only thing that I did not realize when I bought these ones is that they did not come with the connection to just plug into the stock harness like these ones. Now if you're not electrical savvy I would recommend getting the style that does have the connector already on it. But if you wanna save a couple bucks and get these ones, then it's pretty easy to transfer over. Right now, I don't have the shrink wrap to be able to do that correctly at the moment, so I'll just have to do that at a later date. We can get everything else done at least. All right, next up, we've got our cork to put on. Essentially what this does is create a layer between the heater and the bar itself to just really insulate and keep the heat from going through the bar and just dissipating. All right, and then to install it, you'll start, start at the end here. Kind of press that down a little bit. You're gonna work your way over. All right, we've got the cork on there. Next up is the heater. Now here you can really see the difference between how much that extended heater makes quite a bit. All right, now our final step here, our grip itself. So you can tell that yes, this is going to have to be cut down but that's why they give you such a long grip. You just need to cut it down where you want it. All right, and just like that, we are all done. I realized until I was just about done, I forgot to hit the record button, but essentially where the air comes in handy is when you're using one hand to push the grip on there, use the other hand to work the air. That'll just create an air pocket around between the handlebar itself and the grip and it will just make it a lot easier to push on. You can also see that I did have to cut off quite a bit of the grip here to be able to fit it on there, but worked out pretty well. And you can also see the wire in there from the heater. It just goes through my throttle block right there so it doesn't interfere with the throttle itself at all. All right, and I'll save you guys the boringness of having to watch me do it twice. So I'll get this other side knocked out and we'll see you here in just a minute. 
All right, we are all good to go on the left-hand side here. One thing I did forget to mention when you do install both the cork and the heater is that uh, putting a little bit of electrical tape on the ends of both of them so that when you do install the grip here, it's a lot easier to push that on. And then right here on the end where I have the wire coming out, I'm not too worried about that. I did put a little bit of electrical tape on here just to keep it down and away from getting caught on anything. My hand normally sits right in this area. So while I'm riding, I'm not too concerned about it. The wire being right here, as well as this little indented area, you can tell where the end of the cork and heater is right here. But I'm not too worried about it since my hand normally sits right in right here and it's not in the way. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for today's video. I'm gonna get this thing put back together and then go inside and cool off. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.